Okay, so last time we looked at uh, a formal definition of an extensive form game. Today, what we will do is uh, study single act games. Now, the idea of a single act game is simply that the play that each player gets to act at most once in the game. So, can you tell me what would be a single act game described by in an extensive form? So, how would I describe a single act game through an extensive form? So, an extensive form has uh, ha, uh, the an extensive form is a tree which in which the nodes of the tree are divided into player sets. Player sets are uh, are partitioned into information sets, right? So, if a player gets to act at most once, then what what uh, what can we say about? No. No. What were you saying? Sorry. See each path in the tree starting from the root node going towards eventually the leaf node. Suppose this is one leaf node. This path passes through several intermediate nodes. These intermediate nodes are part of some or the other player set, right? And further, they are also part of uh, some information set of, of that particular player, okay? So, if I am saying that each player gets to play at most once, how should the, the information sets and the, or the player sets be arranged? So, okay, let me ask you a, dif the, a different question. So, if, if a player gets to play twice, what must be the case? Gets to act twice? No, not two player sets. Each player has one player set, which is the set of his nodes. He will appear. Ah. Now, the path, there can be, you can have situations where there is this path. Here, suppose uh, the black path player, this is no, a node of player 1. And this, this is also, say, a node of player 1. Whereas, in the, along the blue path, this only this is a node of player 1. So, along the black path, the player player 1 plays twice here. So, if the game goes along this black path, then he player 2 will have to take action twice, right. Whereas, if the play, game goes along the blue path, then he would have, he can take, he, he has to act once. So, now whether a player acts once or twice depends on the path. Basically, it depends on how the game actually evolves, right? It's quite possible. So, I've just defined player sets as a partition of the nodes, and like and further information sets are further partitions of player sets. There is no nothing to say that the game follow goes in rounds where first one player plays, then the next player plays. There could be a different path along the there this different sequence along different uh, different paths of the tree. Different histories in the game can generate two different uh, orders of play for the player players. So, now if a player gets to play, so when would I, so when would I, would you say that a player gets to act only once or at most once? See, so the, the simple question is what, what does it mean in terms of information sets for you to say that a player gets, at each player acts at most once. Well, for that the basic condition would be that every path starting from root to leaf node has to intersect the player set of every player at most once. If it intersects a player set of, uh, of a player twice, then it means that there are two nodes along any, there is a history in which there are two nodes in that history where the player needs to act, ok. So, so a single act game is simply that each path from root to leaf intersects each 
players player set player set at most once okay so this is what it mean to, uh, for a game to be a single act game so a single act game uh, so of course there can be uh, parts of the game where a player doesn't get to play okay so we have seen a game like that in the earlier where you know if you remember the one player if he plays see if this l1 r1 l2 r2 this sort of game so if player 1 played l1 the game ended so player 2 didn't get to play so it's okay but but here player 1 and player 2 will get to play at most once along any history of the game is clear okay okay so let's do an example so this is player 1 suppose he has three actions left middle and right player 2 now is here so these are two information sets of player 2 so player 2 can tell whether player 1 has played l or not l and after that player 2 has so let's call these l1 m1 r1 this is called l2 r2 l2 r2 l2 r2 and the um, payoffs are 0 0 minus 1 minus 2 1 3 2 0 3 2 1 and minus 1 0 okay and so and assume both players minimizing now let's let's again try to analyze this uh, using uh, so i want to make the point that uh, so let's we'll try to analyze this game in two different ways one by writing out the normal form of the game and the other by uh, trying to sort of decompose the game in a, in in the way uh, based on what we see in the extensive form so if you if you remember the logic we had used earlier I had told you that we can we can try to decompose this game in a fall in the following way that player one basically has this choice. The choice is to either play L1 and then engage with player two in a and reveal that action to player two and then, then player two and basically engage in a dynamic game with player two or not play L1 and engage in a simultaneous move game with player two with actions M1 and R1. Right. So, if you take the left part of the game, what is the payoff that player 1 can expect from this? So, if he plays L1, what would what would happen? Yeah. So, play, if he plays L1, player 2 would respond, player 2 is, is minimizing. So, player 2 would respond with L2, okay, and then player 1 will get uh, 0, right. So, so, in the left, in the, in the LHS game, player 1 plays L1 and player 2 plays L2. Now, what about the right hand side game? Now, the right hand side game is a is a is a simultaneous move game. In the RHS game, what what can uh, what can we expect? Well, the RHS game is actually a non zero sum simultaneous move game. So, let us write out let us write out the matrix for that. So, player 1, what are the strategies for the player for player 1 in the RHS game? M1 and R1 and for player 2 is again L2 and R2. So, player 1 gets, so the payoffs are 3 comma 2, 1 and R2 is then 0 comma 3, R1 2 comma 1 minus 1 comma 0 okay so can you tell me what is the nash equilibrium of this r1 r2 right yeah so so this is the nash equilibrium r1 r2. so so in the rhs game basically what you we conclude is that player 1 plays 
plays R1 and player 2 plays R2. Okay. So, in short what we are basically saying is that the solution of this game is uh, now to be seen by comparing the outcomes of these two games. So, if player 1 play the LHS game, he plays L1 and player 2 responds with L2. So, the players get 0 comma minus 1 in other and player 1 in particular gets 0. Whereas, if player 1 engages with player 2 in the RHS game, then he gets pay, then they get pay of minus 1 comma 0 and player 1 is getting minus 1. So, player 1 therefore, has to decide which one what he now plays and it turns out that well minus 1 being less than 0, player 1 would prefer to engage with player 2 in this simultaneous move game in the right hand side game. Okay. So, in other words the and so the Nash so, the Nash equilibrium then is that uh, you can sort of logically say that the payoff for player 1 at Nash at the at the solution would be minus 1 and for player 2 it would be 0. Okay. Now, again as I said this this sort of reasoning we have done before, but there is a little bit of a heuristic reasoning going on here because what we have said is we have tried to decompose the game into two parts. There is no as of now no proper theory for allowing us to do this decomposition. Okay. We are trying to sort of solve it almost like it is a puzzle, we said okay well logical puzzle, we say okay well what would happen if this would happen, what would happen if that. There is no theory backing this, but it turns out that this actually is this kind of way of solving does in fact get you to a Nash equilibrium of the game. And you can feel I, what I will tell you show you again is that this is in fact, this is in fact, a, this is a Nash equilibrium and I will Okay. As I told you, if you want to really find, find all the Nash equilibria of the of uh, uh, properly find Nash equilibria of a game, you have to list out all strategies and then write out the normal form. So, now let us do this more formally. What are the strategies for player 1? Player for player 1, it is either L1, M1, or R1. So, there are three strategies for player 1. What about for player 2? How many strategies for player 2? Four strategies for player 2, right? Yeah. So, the strategies are uh, let, let me write it like this. So, first is first one is to always play L2, second is to always play R2. Um, Third is play L, L2, L2 if player 1 has played L, L1 and other and R2 otherwise and fourth is to play R2 if player 1 has played L1 and L2 otherwise. Okay. So, this then gives us a Okay, can you list out the payoffs here for the two players? So, this should be 0 comma minus 1, minus 2 comma 1, Zero comma three, three comma two, two comma one, minus one comma zero, minus one comma zero, two comma one. Is this correct? Okay. All right. So now, what are the Nash equilibria of this?
okay so where is your earlier nash equilibrium the earlier nash equilibrium earlier equilib uh, logic was saying that player player 1 should engage could should play r1 get into the simultaneous move game and then play r1 right so let's see is that like here somewhere as a nash equilibrium so it's it's this one right it's minus 1 comma 0 this this one so player 1 plays r1 and player 2 is going to play l2 if player 1 played l1 and r2 other way r2 if uh, in the other case so that that is that's gamma gamma 2 3 okay so actually and if you see here this is exactly how we how, what we concluded so if player 1 played l1 player 2 would have played l2 if player 1 plays uh, otherwise if player 1 plays either m1 or r1 then it's a simultaneous move game and in that player 1 should play r1 and player 2 should play r2 right so that's effectively this equilibrium okay so let me mark this so this is the equilibrium we have already calculated now there is an addition to this one more equilibrium and that is this one the one mark that i just marked with a star now what is this equilibrium so player 1 here is playing l1 and what is player 2 playing player 2 is playing l2 right l2 means uh, he is playing l2 at every information set regardless of what player 1 plays he is playing l2 right so if so player 2 is playing so gamma 1 gamma 2 1 here this this here this this is a constant strategy which means it is the strategy that player 2 would have played in the absence of any information right so it it is the strategy that player 2 would have played had these two you know these two be in one information set correct so that's a strategy that is feasible for this player so now actually let us go ahead and see so what if what would happen in fact if those two were the, a common information set okay so if in that case the game what would the game become the game would then become that player 1 has these choices l1 m1 r1 player 2 now at every node has two actions l2 l2 r2 l2 r2 l2 r2 and you would have the same set of payoffs right so can you tell me what is the matrix for that game yeah so it would so now how many strategies for player 1 three strategies but how many strategies for player 2 only two strategies for player 2 right because he has just one information set and two actions at each, at each information set so he is basically he has just two so it's effectively just a simultaneous move game in which player 1 has three three actions l1 m1 r1 player 2 has two actions l2 and r2 okay now those two actions l2 and r2 are actually nothing but these two constant strategies this strategy to always play l2 and this strategy to always play r2 right by inspection can you tell me what should be the payoff matrix for that for this game yeah the first two columns from here right the for these this this portion is actually the payoff matrix for this game because actually these these are those strategies right to always play l2 and to always play r2 okay so so let's write out the uh, write this out here okay all right so now what is the equilibrium of this yeah so you can check that this is the equilibrium of this is this one so this starred equilibrium then we can interpret it in the following way the starred equilibrium is actually not really an equilibrium of this game in in its in in a sense that it is in fact uh, it's in fact an equilibrium of an of another game in which player 2 has just ignored the information that is available to him and that equilibrium has shown up here as part of you know the overall strategic interaction 
So this starred equilibrium is actually the equilibrium of an informationally inferior game. Informationally inferior in the sense that someone has lost information in this game. Okay, in this case, player two has lost information, and that in so the uh, that kind of so that's not our game. That's uh, that's a sort of an informationally inferior hypothetical other game whose equilibrium is has is present here in our game. And this actually is a very general fact that you take any dynamic game and you will be able to find potentially several informationally inferior games okay in that that are, there are several games that are informationally inferior to the given game and equilibria of all those games will be inherited as equilibria of this game okay so in particular what is the rich informationally richest game is the game with perfect information every information set is a singleton right such a game will have equilibria of all inferior games, all in games inferior to it, inherited as equilibria in it. Okay, so this is this. Yeah, I will prove it more. I will prove it. But this is this is a general fact that whenever you you take any game and you take an informationally inferior version of it, its equilibria, the informationally inferior one. Its equilibria are inherited as equilibria in the richer one. Okay, so so that's the fact I wanted to I wanted to tell you about today.